Well, hello to the most beautiful honey glazed pineapple topped Christmas hams that I have ever seen in my entire life. How are you on this fine day? I hope you are all well. I want to wish you a happy holiday if you don't celebrate. I wish you a happy day. I love you all. And before we start this eight strainer pour, which <laughs> I don't know how it's going to go, I want to give a couple of thank yous out and I want to show you a couple of recent paintings that I have done that are dried, resined, and ready, ready to be sold. So to start off first, let me say thank you. Let me say thank you to Katherine Babcock for sending me this pack of strainers to begin with making this video possible. Thank you so much, my friend. I am so appreciative. I want to thank the following individuals for the Christmas donation to my channel. I am so grateful and humbled and I just hope in the following new year that I will be able to thank you enough through my videos, through my work. So Robbie B, Donna K, Patricia S, Tracy B, Yvonne L, Jean H, Janet V, and Teresa T. Thank you so, so very much. I love you. I love all of you that are watching. I have some really great things coming up in the new year. I will tell you a few. I have decided to finally write a book and it's not going to be the typical pouring book. It's going to have um, resin and acrylic in one book, how-to instructions with lots and lots of tips. I'm also in that book going to include a little bit of my personal journey and how I got here. And um, I'm really, really excited. I've always wanted to write a book, believe it or not. I, it, it's always been a passion of mine since I was young. Believe it or not, in my family line, I am maybe the 20th great cousin <laughs> or 20th cousin to, depending on the years, I don't know. Harriet Beecher Stowe was one of my relatives, and you know she is a writer, was a writer. So it's something, I have a lot of writers in my family, and I'm going to take on that project. Also, I'm going to be offering, or I'm going to be putting together some videos from A to Z, very lengthy course type videos, all packed into one big video for people that really need the help on both acrylic and resin. So uh, 2020 is gonna be a great year. So anyway, let me show you these couple of paintings that I did recently. And I actually have a couple of others that I did probably about a month ago. So that was the three-sided Dutch pour that I did. Came out beautiful. B-E-A, beautiful. All resined, ready to go. The sides, nice and clean. Love my clean sides. Now this next one, I have not removed the drips off of the, oh no, this one I did remove the drips. This was another one I did recently. And you can see how pretty that is. I'm trying to get those colors to light up, but it's hard up close like this. If anybody's interested in any of these or seeing them up closer with better lighting, just email me or by Tammy at yahoo.com. Okay, sides nice and clean. And then I have this one. Very pretty. Then I have this two piece set 
Now, I did not do these on camera, but they're wood. Beautiful two-piece set. Is that one? And that one. And then I have two more here to show you that are oldies, but goodies. So this one still needs a coat, another coat of resin. I did only one coat. I usually do two coats. You can see I had some rejection up in the corner there, so that's why it's gonna get another coat. But I normally do two coats anyway, because with canvas, you're always going to get this after one coat. I don't know if I could show it to you. You can see how you can see the canvas a little bit. So two coats really uh, covers that all up and makes it almost like a domed glass cover on the painting. And then we have this one here. This is the last one. So I will be adding those to Etsy, but if you are interested, just let me know. We'll talk privately. Art by Tammy, Yahoo.com. So let's get on with the show, shall we? I've already got some white down, as you can see here. And I have eight strainers. I'm going to do what I did in the last video, which I can show you a little bit of this. I don't have the room to show you exactly how it dried, but it pretty much stayed the way you saw it, okay? And that's got to be um, coated and resined. So we're going to try that again. And I'm going to use the Parage Posse paints. If you're interested in those paints, Christina Welsh sells them, and I will link the information below. So the paints are mixed. Half Floetrol, half water. I, or I'm sorry, half Floetrol, half paint. Um, and then a little tiny bit of water to get it to the right consistency, which I can show you is, oh, there's that lump I was looking for. Oh. Well, I'll get it after. So it leaves a little mound on the surface and disappears really quickly. That's what you're looking for. Um, so what I'm going to do is just like the last video, just go around and start squirting the color in there. Just like so, I'm not trying to do anything, any kind of design or anything like that. I'm just gonna let it flow where it wants to. This color is called Moody Blues. Or moody blue, moody blues, moody blue, one of those. Then I'm going to do um, deep lagoon shimmer. A little gold. I've had these paints mixed up for probably over a month, so I'm trying to use them up. But they they'll they'll be fine in the bottles if as long as you have a uh, cap on it. They should last a while if you want to pre-mix your colors. Then I'm gonna do some of the purple which I believe is the Parage Posse Purple. And then tap it off with white and then repeat. So I hope everybody has their Christmas shopping done. I can tell you that I don't. 
or everybody that is Christmas shopping. I hope you have it done because uh, I realize not everybody celebrates Christmas. Um, but for those that do, what chaos. And I do this to myself every year. I say, I'm going to start in October. And I don't. Today is Sunday. And people just turn into crazy people around this time of year. I cannot believe the horns honking and... <laughs> It's just craziness. Now, some of these I may have to lift for the paint to come out, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I want to just keep adding paint till they touch. That's what I did last time. And as you can see, I'm not really layering them the same. I'm just picking up the colors, putting down the four colored colors, and then I'm separating them with white after I use all four. So now that I did that, I hope I did that. I think I used the green. A little more white. No silicone in these colors, by the way. I don't mind using silicone, I'll be honest with you. Um, it's the cleaning that I don't want to have to do afterwards. But yeah, I really don't mind using it. I know a lot of people don't like it. No. Oh. That's a lot of gold. Let me get, get away from that gold. And I think this will be the last round. I'm going to put a little bit of blue and green and be done with it. That one already has green. I'm kind of shooting it down into the colors too in that Um, laying it down gently, like kind of just squirting it in there now. So now what I'm going to do, and I knew that this one here wasn't going to sit flush. So that's why I put it on the corner, hoping that it would slide out this way. But of course, it's going that way. So what I'm going to do now is slowly lift them up. And let them drain and kind of put my hand under to catch the drip. This one drained nicely. That's cool. Try not to stick my fingertip. The gloves on the fingers, the fingers on the gloves are always. We got a little bit of suction there. Did you see those ninja like moves? Didn't accomplish it there, but <laughs> telling you I'm a ninja. Stealth moves right there. So we got some cool patterns out of them. They're all kind of a little bit different in their own way. I'll have to find out where my friend <clears throat> got these from on Amazon. And I'll try to link them in my Amazon shop. Because it was, I believe, a seven pack. Plus I added two of my own. No, one of my own. <clears throat> That is not too bad. They're all kind of cool. All right, so I'm going to torch quick.
pop those bubbles. So the reason why I decided to do the private uh, classes for beginners is because on YouTube, you want a tutorial that's thorough, but nobody's going to sit and watch. Well, I shouldn't say nobody because people would, but a majority of my viewers do not want to sit and watch me explain things like different types of tapes and different types of finishes you know so i figured i would do one video that has everything start to finish do one for acrylic and then do a separate one for resin because there are so many topics that i could discuss to help people but a majority of the people watching me know a lot of that information and they don't want to hear it. So to be fair to both, that's why I am doing it. All right. So we got that up. And now we're going to start tilting. So. I think I'm going to come this way first because I have this issue going on here and I need it to come over this way. So, and I had a feeling I was lifting cups up with my canvas and I am so we're going to take our time and stretch nice and slow to the bottom, your right, my left corner. I don't want to lose too much of that pattern there. So now I'm going to kind of bring it back to the center. And then I'm going to go over to my left here, your right again. right there come back I'm sorry about the view guys but this is a biggie it's a 20 by 20 again sorry if I'm off camera but I'm just tilting So now I'm going to take my canvas and go right up on the corner, like so. And I'm going to come back. Speaking of, one of my subscribers, I can't remember your name, I'm sorry, um, <clears throat> said maybe that you can put the strainer down and pour the flowers and then just not tilt, leave them like that. Um, problem with that is you're going to have a lot of paint there and that's that puddle that you create and your paints most likely will crack with it being that thick. But go ahead and try it. I always encourage people to try things because uh, that's what this is about. So I have one more corner here. We're getting there. Actually, I like two more. I have to get down to this There we go. Okay. 
Very pretty. Love the purple. And now one last corner. Let me come around the side here. Sorry again about the horrible view. We're almost done here. Okay. find my cup <laughs> lost it all right so now I want to try to get this up here more so I'm gonna just this is where you start looking at your design and try to place things where you want them after you do that first major tilting so I'm looking at this and I absolutely love this area here. Absolutely love this area here and over here. And I know if I stretch this bottom area upwards, it's going to help a lot. But I want to try to be mindful of the areas that I like and watch them as I tilt. Because I don't want to lose them. I also knew though, by stretching this bottom area that I would get some really, really beautiful colors in there. And I think I'm gonna leave it like that. I like that a lot. There's a lot going on in here. All right, I'm gonna take off these disgusting gloves and um, the little corners that I missed right here, what I'll do is I'll take one of matching colors here. Like I could take some gold and just pop it on the corner and eventually it'll slide off anyway because these colors are all pulling down. Which, speaking of, let me make sure you're on camera here. Um, speaking of, after you do any type of pour, resin or acrylic, for the first 20 minutes or so, you should come back to your painting several times and with a popsicle stick or a weapon of your choice, go underneath the canvas and wipe off the drips. So, for example, I'm over here, this side. Just come down under the side because what will happen is those drips underneath the canvas will keep dripping and pulling the paint that's up here and it'll drag some of your design that you love so much off of the canvas so just go around it a few times when you're first done and then come back about 10 15 minutes later and do it again and then it should be fine All right, so I'm going to give you guys a close-up of this beauty as soon as I torch it. Pop those bubbles. Very important or else they'll pop during curing and you'll have a bunch of pits all through your painting. Okay, 
here we go. Love that area there. It does look like a flower. If you want to put the paint through the strainer and then tilt it just a little bit, um, that may work instead of stretching it all the way across the canvas like this here. But um, you have to get that paint to spread out a little bit. You can't leave it as a mound in the center like that because it will crack. I look at that area. The depth. That is just beautiful. Here we go here. I'm really liking these strainer pores. That is just gorgeous. Alrighty, my friends. Well, that's it for today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you're on Facebook and you want to join a group, I have a group. It's called United We Pour. Just look in my description and uh, there is a link that will take you right to it. You can share your artwork, your strainer pours so I can see them. Um, talk to some really nice people and get some tips. It's a great, fun group. No drama. Drama free. And um, the links for the paints, um, all my other links as far as reaching out to me, social media, all that is in the description. I want to thank you guys again for the uh, wonderful um, donations and the gifts. I do have a special video coming up for one of my very, very long time subscribers since day one, I believe. And she sent me a gift that she wanted me to open on camera. So Tina, that is coming up and I will be on camera with a special message for you guys for Christmas. I hope you all have a great day and happy pouring.